Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And in this week's episode, we are going to, re we are going to review the first episode of? of the new Star Trek series, Strange New Worlds. So this is a series which takes place about 10 years before the original series. And it features Captain Pike, Captain Christopher Pike, and a young, uh, younger uh, chief science officer, Spock. And we have been and number one. and number one, yeah. and the rest of the crew, which we'll get to. And we have been anticipating this episode, this series, for a couple of years, like a full least, couple of at years. Least. Yeah, season two of Discovery, we saw them, we saw Pike and Spock, mm. and and how well they worked together, and just how cool they were. And we said, "What did we say?" I want to be watching that series. That's yeah. the yeah. series yeah. we want to see. Yeah, absolutely, and he stole the show. It was without a doubt. Uh, Both of so them did. good. So I don't know that we need to do much of a spoiler-free review. I think that if you haven't seen the episode uh, and you're interested in you know, Star Trek, go watch it and then come back and watch the rest of our review. Because yeah. there's not really much we could say without spoilers galore. But what would you give it? Just a grade, letter grade for the first episode, not the series as a whole. Scale idea. of one to ten, I give it high sixes. I said a letter grade. A you're letter grade. Switching the scale. On I would me? give it. I would give it a C minus. I give it I give it an A minus actually. I, I, there's definitely some things to complain about, but for a first episode of a new series, it was a solid start. A minus. You stole my grade. A right, minus. Fine. Then it a looks minus. like we're gonna slug oh, it out. Yeah, we're gonna slug it way out. Wrong. Okay, now and spoilers. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's really not much we can say without getting knee deep into spoilers. So this episode takes place after the second season of Discovery in the timeline. So mm -hmm. the, all the things that happened to Pike and and. And Spock and the Enterprise occurred before the beginning of this series. Um, and it, it, it pretty much picks up right, right there. It might be a year later. Might, yeah, you know, a little bit of time might have gone by. Didn't Spock mention three months without his sisters? Yeah, a few sisters. months. Okay, so yeah, maybe so, so it's, it's a few months. So Pike took off a few months to kind of recover from the information that he gained, which, yeah. which was he knows when he's going to... Yeah, he, he saw, he lived through the future where he is in an accident and he gets in the chair with a beeping yes or no, right? So he's not, you know, in, in the show, though, he says, like, I saw my own death. He, ah, he didn't, though. He but, experienced But it. he made a spe he specifically said after that, I said my own, I saw my own death or the death of who I am now, right. which is exactly yeah, what, correct. which yeah. is a great addition. Right, right, right. But, of course, he doesn't know about, you know, the, the whole going back to the Telosians and, you know, which is a pretty good deal, you yeah, know. It's a pretty living, good deal. Living in a yeah. custom-made hallucination, yeah. not bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you think about what your retirement's going to be like, that's yeah. a pretty good setup if you think about it, right? Uh, All right, so I'll go, you know, guys, get right. into it because I'm ready to, to level down what I, my complaints. Right. So let me hear your the your intro. Presses. The intro. Uh, first off, when it started, I was giddy like a ten year old because I was so excited because it was finally here. How long have we been waiting? We wanted it. We predicted it. We wished. We wished it happened. It was there. I was so excited. The intro. The music. And the and the visuals, the visuals were beautiful. I love the intro, the mm -hmm. ship, the ship, the is detail, beautiful. the ideas. It, it opens. It all starts with lights winking on. You're like, what are these lights? Oh, they're the windows in in, in the actual Enterprise. Um, the music was good, but it, a little underwhelming. I think the you know mm -hmm. it could be a little bit better. Uh, it, it's just not as powerful, mm -hmm. but still much better than the Enterprise opening. Well, that's, yeah, that's music. low bar. So, yeah, yeah, low bar, low bar, but still a decent opener. So let's just, I'm going to give my overall themes okay, that I thought, go ahead. like what worked, what didn't work. Um, I thought the the cast, the casting was spot on. It was great. I love the characters, mm -hmm. love the actors who play those characters. So I think that that, that totally worked for me. There's, there, you see, you're starting to see the beginning, I think, of uh, not only personality, but the relationships and the interactions. Again, there's only so much, they had a lot of work to do in one episode. I think they tried to do too much in one episode. Yeah. But um, you, you know, getting the, just feeling at least some of that vibe was a good thing. I, I felt it captured the vibe of the original series in a, in a good way. Uh, you know, definitely, you know, accomplished that goal. Um, the, some of the gratuitous fan service, at first I was like, oh, okay, that's a little gratuitous. But then I realized this whole series is fan service. The whole thing is fan service, so yeah. you can't argue, you know, that they threw in Chapel and Uhura, you know. Right. Um, 
But they threw in, but there were some good ones. I mean, no, I thought that the chapel was and Uhura and Uhura was like, how young would she have been? But they specifically she said cadet. Cadet, so cadet on communication rotation. So that's yeah, great. Yeah. Communication um, rotation. Yeah, yeah. It was something like said? that. Uh, whatever, it was like an internship. Yeah. Yeah. Nurse Chapel yeah. was was nice. Didn't I didn't really expect her Me to neither. be there? Did yeah. you? And and the character and, and the actress fan. I love her. Yeah. I They're, loved like, her, but she totally reminded me of Luna from uh, Harry Potter. You know the Harry girl, Potter. You know the girl with the blonde hair. Yeah, really. She looks like her. A little bit. Yeah, it looks Not like the character. adult version of that of well, her. So what else did they do though? They had the, the USS Archer from the, you know yeah. uh, Jonathan Archer Not from the doubt. Enterprise series. That was a nice little touch. Um, Captain they, April was Captain sent, April. Sent yeah, yeah, because Pike yeah. said something about April sent you know sent me. So the, Robert April was the first captain of the USS Enterprise, of course, before Pike and before Chatner. First time we've ever seen him in the flesh. Yeah, and they um, picked they picked a time on the timeline where the Prime Directive came into being, mm -hmm. which I did, I always just assumed it goes way way back. And it, well, it's got to have some history. It was General yeah. Order One. Yeah, they, started, they wanted to upgrade it to the Prime Directive because of course of course Pike violated it. But he had a good reason for violating it. A because very good reason. It had already been violated inadvertently and in a way that they couldn't even acknowledge because it was in that super classified, we don't talk about this category. So they, they kind of had no choice. They said, but to, to make themselves feel better, they upgraded it to pr the prime directive. Like basically don't yeah. mess with this anymore. Yeah. So, right? And of course Pike's response was that'll, that'll never stick with the classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, which we know it's not true. So I thought, you know, overall the first episode, and again, we, I think we all like the fact that they're going back to um, just, you know, one-off episodes. They go on a mission, something cool happens, and they're done, right? Yeah, like let's call those beam-down missions. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, the, the away team or beam-down or, or landing party Yeah, missions. we don't need them to save the universe. Yeah, please don't save don't the universe. Don't ever do that. Just go yeah. meet straight, meet new civilizations and, and do the yeah. thing that and the strange original Strange new series, world, yeah. right? Strange new world. And, you know, listen, you know, the, uh, the first two Star Trek... TV series, mm -hmm. the, the original series, and Next Gen yeah. had these yeah. one-off episodes, and it, and it was wonderful, and there was a charm about that. And they have arcing plot yeah, lines that are sure. fine, but you know, like Discovery, right out of the gate was like it was so yeah, over the top high stakes that nothing felt high stakes anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't live in <laughs> high stakes; you have to have low right. stakes. Right? I know, I know. That was this is I think what, again collectively this is one of our peeves of just about science fiction and and these epic movies in general is that they keep feeling that they have to keep raising the stakes. It's like, how many times is there a small chance that we're going to save the universe? You know? Yeah. It just, <laughs> you know, the universe right. would have been destroyed 20 times over, you know, in almost any franchise. So that was uh, a just massive... stop. We don't need it. Just, what the, the, is, if the stakes are high for the characters we like, that's enough. Yeah. I mean, that is absolutely enough. Remember watching the movie Ant-Man after all the great Marvel yeah. movies and you're like, you know, that was not only hilarious and everything was great, but it was refreshing because yes. was, the stakes were low, which is, you know, kind of a nice change. Right. So let me clarify this idea of stakes. The stakes can be extraordinarily high for three or four people. Right, exactly. Not the entire universe. universe right? yeah. but, Absolutely. You know, but that's more real. That's You could understand it on that level. Like when we watch, you know, the Avengers Endgame, you know, we you can't really put yourself in the shoes of those characters in any way. They're, they're dealing with things yeah. that are so out there and I, I loved it it was great but I, but going back to those first two star trek um series you know there was something about the intimacy you know this yeah. is this is what you know star trek has a few things they have competency competency porn relationships and intimacy among those characters you need to learn about the characters yeah and you need to see them their relationships yeah. progress right and that i was, think we're on the way no no but no absolutely yeah. but look at discovery when you know we're well into like season two and you're like i don't know most of the people on the bridge I know. what's Remember happening that? i what? couldn't name the characters on. on that bridge you know it was it was disappointing in that regard so the, i i loved how they handled all of those things i completely yeah. agree but there were there were things all right, so what gave you a c what did you what did you know yeah about? jay that's a, all right so first of all I, just because it's Star Trek and I love it. I'm not yeah. going to give. I'm not giving them a pass on anything. I didn't give the the uh, Han Solo movie a pass on anything. Yeah, but tell the specifics. I am. I'm just setting the stage. I want to yeah. put things in a proper appropriate okay. context so you understand where I'm coming mm -hmm. from. All right. So number one, number one, number one. I yeah. felt that the the series felt a little bit like everybody was like high on being in Starfleet. Like everyone's like, oh, we're in Starfleet. Where everybody's kind to each other. They were hitting themselves over the head with that. 
like give you a perfect example. Dr. McCoy in the original series. Why did I love that character? Well, there's a million reasons to love that character, but one of them was he stuck out like a sore thumb because he was, as Steve said, he's a curmudgeon. The lovable curmudgeon. Right, yeah. he complained. He had a, he had a, a, a strange, funny, but legitimately contentious relationship with Spock. Persnickety. He was persnickety. Captain Kirk also had <laughs> mm -hmm. some foibles. You know, he had things about He was about a bit him. of an asshole. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and he, was a, and he was a womanizer even back in the day, you know. And Chekhov kind of had his yeah, he was snarky. Serving, snarky side as well. So but, who do we got? We got, we got La'an, Nooney, and Singh. I know. She's great. I really She's a hard ass. ass. She's a hard She's a hard ass. ass. Standout. And, and, you know, we could say Nooney and Singh, obvious. She's, she's clearly... Uh, related to Khan, mm. related to Khan, and I tried to do some research on that. They're not giving anything away, yeah. but clearly they're saying let that lay for a while, yeah. and something will ha develop over time. But clear, does that mean they're going to actually can they find Khan? Yeah, and revive know. him maybe temporarily, and then put him back. But I'd like them not to because I want them to just write their own stories. And I hear you. Yeah, we're we're going to talk about Lots Ken in, in a moment. Yeah. All right. So a few other things I'd like to bring All up. Okay, Jay. Um, the. James Cauley, who is the person who created the Star Trek yeah. Museum in which upstate is New York, by the way. which is amazing. Oh my God. And if you love Star Trek, go there. It's like basically a 4K version of the original Star Trek, the original series uh, ship, it's, like set. We, co we collectively describe the experience a as, as close experience. to it. Yeah, it's like a religious experience. <laughs> yeah. It was unbelievable right. walking Trek through fans, those halls. Okay. So I'm reading Facebook and I, I follow him on Facebook. And he said, and I agreed with him, he said, why didn't they just use the original series set? Now let me let me ah! let me talk about it before you guys jump down my throat. Now, of course, you can't just do a one for one. You can't just take that thing, the way that they built it and everything. Like you can modernize it, but you don't have to modernize it to where it looks out of place. Now, as an example, the the ship that they're on right now, the Enterprise right now, so it's ten years before the original series, yeah. technologically speaking, and it is the most advanced looking ship I've seen come out of Star Trek ever. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's 50 years in the future from the original series or 100 years in the future. It is. It, it's it way is, more modern it's, looking it's than the next gen. It's literally 50 years in the future of the original oh, series. Okay. So what I'm saying is that they chose a, a, a futuristic aesthetic where I would have liked them to have chosen the older aesthetic of the Star Trek universe yeah. because it does exist earlier in the Star Trek universe. So why would they pick such a futuristic looking so ship? Here's why. Because clearly they had to make a decision as to whether or not they were going to stick with choices that were made in 19, the late 1960s that mm -hmm. were limited by the technology at the time, yeah. not necessarily the story, right? Mm -hmm. and, if, and once you break with that, once you say, well, forget, forget that, forget, you know, again, like the aesthetic and, and any choices that they made that was because of the limitations of the technology at the time, we're just going to pretend that that didn't exist. We're going to, you know, reimagine... Star Trek, true to Star Trek, but do it with current technology. And I don't agree with that. The, well, I'm saying that's the choice that they made. I get and that it. choice goes beyond just how much they're going to change the Enterprise, right? It goes beyond that. Of course, it, goes, so, it leads you know, into everything. Once they decide to do that, that's you know, it. They, they're going to lean the into that. The die is cast. So yeah. I was thinking of another TV show that came out recently, yeah. which was the Loki TV show, and they leaned into the cassette. Uh, the cassette punk, right? Yeah. To explain what cassette punk is, it's basically like things that look like they're from the late 60s into the 70s. The say. 70s, yeah. You know, the, the science fiction cassette aesthetics punk. that came out of that. and the, It's the, an analog world. It's an analog yeah. world, right? Yeah. And, and Star Trek, the original series, it, is very analog. Yeah, you know? they had now, no choice. I, now, I, I understand <laughs> the that. rotating dials but, for the time. But they could have bridged the gap a little bit better. How? Be, it's because analog or digital. This is what I'm saying. Though, I'll make this point one last time. There is a timeline in Star Trek. We go, we go all the way back to Pike's era, all the way forward to Discovery. I, I think is the, is like the latest on the the, the, the farthest yeah. in the future yeah. on the timeline. The ships should look different. The 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 sh the clothing that they wear should be different. So these wait. Let me finish my yeah. point. The so those things they they should be following some type of timeline aesthetic that makes sense to the overarching series. If they don't do that, then yes. You but they did it, do that. They did do that, just not as much as you would have yes, liked. So the true. uniforms were the original series uniforms, but tweaked, right? But they definitely look right. like that from that era, right? They don't look like next gen, or they don't look like the later uniforms. They look like the original series. Era uniform. Did it bother you that they moved where the insignia no. was? No. Instead of it being down here, they had it up here. I'm like, why would they? Why would somebody choose that that move? Like, 
It's, no, those little things don't bother. That bothers me. me. The overall vibe was correct, and the, and they're just they're redoing the details. This, this is the Starship Enterprise. It is NCC one seven zero one from the exterior, but it's like that ship, but created with greater technology. I get greater it. Size. I get it. I get it. Anyway, so that like that's just a that's a creative choice. They clearly made that choice. You can disagree with it. I thought I think it's fine. I think they pretty much had to do that. If they were going to tie their hands with 1968 tech or whatever, that would have been too limiting. Or even a, or even a fusion that was too close to the 60s, it would be completely unsatisfying. They they made a creative yeah. decision. If you look, if you look closely at the set, you'll see the influ the influence from of Star course, Bob, from the I bridge. see it. I and see it's it. Be and it's beautiful. Did you play Bridge Crew, Star Trek Bridge Crew? No, Steve, you a little bit, it, right? Yeah. So I got to. Be you know one of the people on the bridge in in a VR environment yeah. on the original the... series bridge, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is me. I'm a modern person. I live I live in today, <laughs> like yeah. uh, anyone that's alive. And being on the bridge with that aesthetic, I thought right. it'd be really cool. It, it 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 felt like it was retro science fiction. Mm -hmm. That's my that's all I'm saying is they they could have retro made this have a retro vibe and they chose not to and I disagree with it. Fine. Yeah. They, they, so the aesthetic Get didn't didn't fully land. You know, yeah. Jay, maybe if they went that route. With Discovery, you know, it would be a little but stronger. Yeah. But once Discovery did it, and this is an offshoot of Discovery, they're done. That's it. I agree. The they made, right. Somebody made that decision right. a long Let's time ago. Let's talk about Canon. Okay. Um, they didn't. They're, they're sticking pretty well with Canon, but they're clearly also, you know, bending the rules a little bit. So the one thing that stuck out with me. This is a huge spoiler, but we know we're already there. Was that at the end they do the big reveal? Like they kept teasing us with Lieutenant Kirk, mm -hmm. and yeah. it turns out it's Samuel Kirk, his brother. Yeah, you know, yeah, Kirk's brother. We we, we meet his corpse with, with the porno stash. Yeah, and he totally came out with a seventies mustache. See, clearly the person that well, we had to be recognizable as that character. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, fine. That was a nice little touch. Yeah, they, they got us with the swapping the Kirks, and and when you see him, like, of course it was Samuel Kirk. It was right. great. I like that. But don't, but, but then you have to say, but wouldn't Spock have mentioned that he worked with Samuel Kirk in the original series episode? I know, I but know. how do you? You can't retcon. They have to do yeah, little, know. but so they're clearly giving themselves little leeways like that, mm -hmm. you know. Or uh, for example, I, re remember in uh, that episode of the original series. Um, um, with with the Romulans, you know, invaded the Enterprise, yeah, and that yeah. alien creature was absorbing all the hatred. Yep. That in that episode, I think was the first time they ever did intraship beaming. Yeah, mm -hmm. first time. Ten years in the future of Pike, and uh, but they did it. Now it's routine. Now it's routine. Yeah. Oh, that's a minor little nit, you know, nitpick. That's not a problem I have another at all. Yeah. Oh, well, are you guys ready for this? Is it a canon one? Is it no. A so we're getting well, off. Well, of no, canon? no, it is a canon one. Right, it's okay. canon, but it, but it is a little bit of a side hustle. I have yeah. to admit. So, <laughs> so in the beginning, they start off by showing Spock being in a romantic situation with another Vulcan. To prank. To, yes. And, I, and I, get, I get it. I get it. It's his time. It's his seven-year vibe. Yeah. But for, <laughs> for new viewers who don't know Spock well or at all, um, this is a very confusing yeah. thing to, to put in front of them because... Spock is the antithesis of that. You know, he's he, he's half human, half Vulcan, but you know, he is largely a Vulcan and operates as a Vulcan. And, right. and that type of interaction is not something that should be, I think, thrown out there so early for people that don't know who Spock is. Now, Steve, mm. I know what you're going to say. Yeah, you're going to say that most of the people watching this show know, know the original Spock series is. and know yeah. who Spock is. But I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it's. I think we're just calling it. We don't know. We we just don't yeah. know how many people would be dialing into this pipe. I don't TV think it matters. Show. Who cares? It matters it because was fine. it's it's it, in and of itself. It was, it was an fine. odd decision to do in the first episode. Like why why have Spock being acting like a, not a Vulcan on the first episode? He wasn't acting like a, a not, not like a Vulcan. Yeah. He was acting like a Vulcan during the, the, his brief courtship with Tapring, and. I thought, what else are they going to do? And it had, first of all, it needs to be about now and before he leaves on his five-year you know, mission. So, but it, now it was, they have to establish, you know. But they have to now address it in a way that, yeah, I was doing my you know seven-year like sex drive thing. Well, now you know? Tepring is off ha doing hanky panky with with Stan, right? Yeah, which is another <laughs> well, thing I, I'm angry not about. Not yet. I think she would have waited until yeah. until Spock became season two. Until Spock became the you know the reason why she, yeah, she yeah. broke it off with him. Um, no, but, uh, you know, but there's a lot of people are saying that that's not canon and stuff. And, and it's, that's a, that's a bit of a nitpick because if you look at some of the, some of the big canon writers like Dorothy Fontana, they wrote stories where, where Spock and Dupring 
did you know meet a little bit here and there, but you know not just when she was seven, but in between. So that's yeah. that's totally fine yes, I too. Do. I liked it. I mean, I, I thought she was she was fantastic. I I kind of like that scene. I see what you mean, Jay. Just when, put when, it three it, or four episodes it, it felt, from now. Right. It felt a little bit like oh okay, this is happening now. Um, but it was a it was a fun scene. But even better, I was talking to Steve about this. The second time you see it, you know what the context is because yeah. going into going into that scene, you're like, what are they talking about? Why are they talking this way? You know, you know, query. Yeah, you know, but Spock like, making weird. out in a restaurant? Come on, you know, don't, don't throw that at us on the first episode of a new series. <laughs> get, like it's I too, it's too, saying. in, it's too intrusive in a way. Like, give us time to 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 get the vibe of these characters and the people playing them and where they are. Yeah, you know, I'll give you that. It might have been a little bit better placed if it was in a few episodes. That's or an so, epic. But it's minor. I'm so, over that. But you bring up a point though, Bob, is that scene? I would. I watched the episode mm. two, twice as well, and I enjoyed it better the second time, partly because. The writing was not as tight as it could have been, uh, and sometimes it was a little bit hard to follow what was going on. Um, obviously, we, you know, you you understand what the plot and what was happening, but I mean, like the dialogue didn't quite gel, yeah. you know, in places. So, and when you watch it through a second time and you know all the context, like, okay, now I get, you know, why they were saying things the way that they were saying, but they didn't really manage like yeah, that, it, that experience going first time so but you know again for a first episode you have a new team and everything it was it was good but it, i hope that the writing tightens up as the season progresses and we've seen this before next yeah. generation's first season was poor crap it was, it was crap. crap let's the, face it the first episode I, I couldn't if you go back and watch the first episode of the next gen you would be shocked at how yeah, horrible I it would, is yeah. yeah so it doesn't mean that this this team of writers and the the showrunners and everything you know they got to get maybe need to get their sea legs for some reason it's not uncommon for star trek to have this problem yeah um but i was hoping to have them knock this out of the park and you guys are giving it in the a range which pretty much means you feel that they did well, i don't feel that they did no, it was a solid effort it wasn't it didn't knock yeah. it out of the park a or a plus is a plus is out of the park well, you a minus, but you are giving it an a that's yeah. that's you know yeah. that's a top yeah. grade but it's you, you, it's you, a good I don't, I don't Very, think you've justified your c though you're giving me a couple of nitpicks okay i'll tell you more i yeah, have more go. to say so what, What's the big thing though? What, what did you did not have fun watching it? Did you? I did not it? have. I did not. I, I had about a seventy for fun level. I wasn't like yeah. blown away at all. I wasn't like I didn't like how um, Pike was already kind of getting over his problem about when him knowing when he's going to die. Like he's talking about it right away. You know, this is they, this series could go on for years, and yeah, that'd be awesome. which would be great. But they're throwing away like one of his biggest plot devices right out of the open, and, and it almost seemed like he's got over it in the very first episode, which to me is weird. Like, the, I mean, he had to deal with it sufficiently that he could function as the captain. He, right. When he was talking with Spock about it, you know, this is the idea himself. that he so you know saw his his future death. He knows that he's going to die in ten years. He's right. like. How will this affect my decision making? Will I be too cautious? Will I be not cautious enough? Think about that. You know you're going to die in ten years. You do do whatever you but want. But that means you know you're not going to die for ten years, yeah. and so you could be reckless for ten yeah, but, years. But yeah, I man. also think though that it doesn't necessarily mean he couldn't get himself killed. Mm -hmm. He probably could get himself killed, even though they, I that, don't know because that's a potent. That is the, the very. Uh, they made it seem like that was the future, not a potential future. I mean, so if he pulled a phaser to his head, but he would fight, and he clearly doesn't. Well, the point is, I, I, I my opinion i think that you know that's but the most likely then, thing that's, that's going to happen planet, he, yeah he wouldn't be so upset if he knew it was he could avoid it no oh, okay, i won't do that then i'll be somewhere else at that time but yeah. whatever that, that's the it premise, seems like it's though. written that's the premise. In, written in stone yeah that's in, a given in, in in any case i think he had to deal with it sufficiently to function as captain and we got him to that point. He still was having the flashes of the face and everything. Yeah. So I don't think it's totally gone, but I don't want to dwell on, why would we want to dwell on that too much anyway? Well, it could be something that comes up every once in a while sure. in an episode here and there. Sure, and that could still happen. I think it still, think it still yeah. could. Yeah. Okay, it's not gone. It's just like, okay, this is not torture me to the point where you're like, you don't want me uh, in charge of that enterprise. That's got to stop. It seems like they. It seemed to you me know, like they wrapped it up in the first well, episode. Well, you know, the thing is, I hate lingering on the reluctant hero thing too long. Anyway, it's not like, reluctant I don't hero. Do he just got, I don't want to go. He's got a shank on him. You know, he's got something that's bothering him, and oh, he still does. And what do you call that? That's that's called good writing. You know, yeah. you can't. You got to have imperfect yeah. characters dealing with their imperfect lives, and in, you know. So right. I just felt like they. I don't like it when they pad the corners too much. I want there to be hard corners in this show. I want the characters to have bad things happen to them. You know. Give it time. It, it needs, yes, we'll see how they handle it. Right, so, see. so my C is me saying, there's a start. I enjoyed the show. I wasn't blown away by it. I think they made some writing mistakes, and I expect them to do a lot better. 
All right, I have a technology nitpick. Go ahead. All right, I got a yes. couple. All right, so the Star Trek franchise has an issue with writing themselves into the into a corner yeah. by not thinking about the implications of the future technology that they're throwing out there. Now, they're at a Classic. very it's they are at a very difficult time in in the future in terms of predicting technology. It's like too far to really predict, right? Mm -hmm. Oh we, yeah, we wrote a whole book about this. Yeah. And it's and what, where they should be is so transformative that it's hard to tell a story that we relate to in yeah. that world. Yeah. So they have to be very careful with how far they advance technology. Um, and it's tempting to create this cool tech, especially when you need it as a plot device to get out of a, situ a current situation. Mm -hmm. But the, the the pitfall is that they don't think of all the implications yeah. of that technology, and you just destroyed your the plot of your show. Give because, me an example from a past. Well, movie. The, the worst the worst one was the interplanetary beaming. It's like, oh, I guess we don't need spaceships anymore. You could just teleport for you know, light years. You could transport, transport from one, from one planet to yeah, another. Yeah, that was ridiculous. You could send armies to invade anywhere. I mean, it just send bombs, just bombs. You yeah, know, it's, it's just ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So this is another transporter related one. So. Um, at one point, you know, the Spock's genetic disguise is failing early and he's not able to get past the retinal scanner. And they make a, a booster shot to, to prolong the effect. But how are they going to get it to him? He's down on the planet already. And, you know, he's about ready to be arrested by the security guards. So they tell the, the transporter tech, you need to beam this into him. You know, yeah, this, that, that was ridiculous. And they said, he said appropriately, transporters don't work that way. And to which the officer responded, yeah. make them work that way. And he's like, okay, give me 10 minutes yeah. and whatever, five minutes. And he makes it happen. So that's, you know, come on. I know it's competency porn, but that like yeah. is magic. Like but, if you, if you're going to very easily just had like change the writing a little bit where Spock had to like dip out for one second to give himself the injection. Yeah. You know, or you, you, you tell, I mean, I would have been happier if they transported it into his hand. And he had to surreptitiously give yes, himself, like, yes. do so, use some intelligence and on the spot thinking and, like, you know, like, trip, fall to the ground and whatever. Something pretend like you trip and you give yourself the injection or you distract the guard. I mean, use some, a little bit of ledger domain there or something rather than just it's magically solved because they solved this right. transporter issue in five minutes that would, that the guy, pre, you know, five minutes ago thought was impossible. See, you did, you, you said the exact, what I said to myself when I watched that was, yeah. oh, you better be, you better watch out. Better watch don't, out. Don't do that. But now <laughs> think of the implication. Right. Now we can beam stuff into people. Yeah. Think about the implications of that. You know, that, yeah, it's it, just it, crazy. It, there's a level of control and nuance now. It's not like you can kill somebody by beaming their heart out. That's kind of in your face, but you could do very you could. you could do very subtle things that they wouldn't even know was happening. I I get that, but my problem with this, Steve, yeah. is that that this little advance, the fact that he said transporters don't do that, to me, that sounds like bullshit because of course that to me that's a very simple extension to transporter technology sure, you can beam people back and forth sure i could beam stuff into their arteries or their or their veins to me that's a very simple mm. solution to that to a problem and maybe should have been addressed you know in, in a different series because yeah. to me it's obvious of course yeah. you could but, beam something in somebody but transport Duh. technology should be tricky and dangerous and they should follow protocol yeah like and not just willy-nilly try something that's never been tried before I, you know, I just, it just. It, I don't disagree with how that. How cool would it have been yeah. if they tried to do it and it failed? It failed. Give me a, give us a failure. Or if, that, the, if the guy just said, no. Yep. If he said transporters don't work that way, make it work that way. No, you don't understand what I'm saying. They don't work that way. I yeah. can't magically change I'm the way. I'm an engineer. That, the I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I just, there would have been so much of a better ways to handle right. that. Right, that would have been a little bit of conflict. Yes. It would have been right. a different level of competency part. Well, I agree. Right? They, right. They agree. And the fact that he even said transporters don't work that way and then solved it in 10 minutes pisses me off at him. I wouldn't trust that guy because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. You know, but, and then they could have done a follow-up. So let's say that they wanted to stick with it, okay? Yeah. Then, then he could have said, I'm never doing that again, right? They could have had that guy like say, "Whoa, that w we shouldn't have that even done that." That could have gone horribly that wrong. That could have killed. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it did go wrong. Yeah, you know, maybe it caused problems, and then I highly doubt it. It would be nice though. Yeah. It should cause problems. Yeah. Now they, they there was another transporter tweak that they did, which I actually am okay with, and that because I think it's it makes perfect sense when the when the uh, the med bay. The, no, when they know well, that's the one we were talking about before the intraship beaming. Yeah, why why wouldn't you be able to do intraship beaming? But when when they uh, when they beam down to the planet, 
they were just in their uniform, yeah. and then they loaded them up. They they like loaded into the buffers all the equipment and costumes they needed, yeah. and then they beamed them down with the stuff that they need. So of course they would be doing that. That gets back to what we were saying about the future technology. You know, we are headed towards a world in which meat space is as virtual and digital as virtual reality is. Like the two things yeah, merge, baby. and you know, of course the original Star Trek couldn't imagine that because it was living in an analog pre-digital world. Um, but now we are in a, so we already know, like the, the last 40, 50 years of techn technological advance has rendered Star Trek, the original series, obsolete. Sure. Right? That's what I mean when I'm okay with them updating the tech of, of the series as it's imagined now. It has to be much more digital. And of course you would do that. Why would you get physically changed when you could just beam into whatever costume? But, but, whatever but, but I think that they should make they should have the teleporter be so on rails. Yeah. Like you said, like remember in one of the Star Trek movies, there was an error with the transport. And they died. And, and people died. People died, yeah. And I think that's cool because the, it should be there because of the abuse like you're saying. And, and, that, and if they don't have yeah. it on rails, then you're going to start, then in three episodes, we're going to be able to say, well, that just be medicine. In yeah, that right, thing. exactly. That's my problem. And I agree yeah. with you. That that's we're going to be saying it. One of the ways to keep the, the technology problem from happening is to put it on rails yeah. and to make it tricky and to make it so that when they say it doesn't, you can't do that with the transporter. You really can't do that with the transporter. It's actually one of the things I like best about the Star Trek Enterprise series. It was because uh, it's 100 years in the past. They didn't have transporters. It made the stakes higher. It made it grittier. You didn't have to worry as much about all of these technological loopholes that they made for themselves. And so um, it's, a, the thing is, it's a franchise problem. They're going into this series now. What is this, the eighth series? Or the, the 11th series, I read. Oh, it's the 11th yeah. Star Trek series? Yep. Okay. Um, it's the 11th Star Trek series. I mean, this is not a new problem, yeah. right? They, the writers should be all over this. And yeah. so it was a little disappointing that they were like, that, that one little bit was like, you know, yeah. that's not a good precedent. That's not a good precedent. Well, here's a, a couple little technical scientific things that, yeah. that struck me. All right, so they're in orbit around the planet, you know, right? They're, they're near the USS Archer. They're trying to figure out what happened. And uh, La, uh, what's her name? Lala? Lan? Lan. 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 Lan says, put the shields up, and they do. And then within three seconds, yeah. they're hit with three plasma rockets. Now, wait a second. What kind of rockets were those that, that were launched and impacted your ship shield within so, so quickly that you had no time to react? Yeah. To me, that's a little like, come on, all right. It was contrived. Absolutely contrived. And also, that's all like, I'm saying. That's wouldn't all I'm the saying. ship detect the incoming missiles Absolutely. and automatically raise the shields? Yeah. At, right. Is it really up to a person to say raise the shields or they would all be dead right. so, by this so 21st that, century technology? So that, yeah. that, that, that annoyed me a little bit. And then the other thing was the whole premise for the, the technology leakage. What, 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 what was it? They created they, they a worm. Observed, yeah. they, they created a worm, a special time... You yeah. know, time it was the hundreds of ships' warp signatures. They were able to somehow read them and reverse engineer warp technology. No, if you well, well, if you if you read if you he, go by what they said, what they that said was they said. no. They said that they were able to reverse engineer controlling a matter antimatter reaction. Yeah, and and yeah. and so much is based on that. That's fine, but wait a second. How is a wormhole going to let you reverse engineer matter? No, but it wasn't a wormhole. It was the warp signature of all the ships the that ships, were there. Yeah. They specifically said that. Yeah. They well, they. they and my memories tell me it was a wormhole, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it was a warp <laughs> signature. I mean, no, just think about what they said. Uh, wow, now I know how to control a matter antimatter. I know. I, mean, I felt that was contrived I'm, as well. It could have been a little bit yeah. more scientific so their, and their, reasonable. Their technology is probably 50 years ahead of ours, uh, you know, like Earth technology right now, something like that. Yeah. Um, and maybe they were, a, they were able to. You know, the, it was able to tell them something about particle physics or whatever. They're like, now that they know, like, matter and antimatter mixing, like, whatever. They were able to learn something about matter and antimatter that enabled them to to create a warp drive. Absolutely, but it, it, it's, the techno babble could have been a little bit better. Techno babble could have been better. It was a little like, what? How do you get from A to B in, but, based but, on that description? Yeah, but whatever. I, I agree, it was a little but bit our, of our like, threshold for techno babble is pretty yeah, well, high. Well, for, for, it, well, it should be for the writers of Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, so I moving agree. forward. Yeah, um, I'm optimistic. I love I love a lot of the concrete that they poured. Yeah, I just want to see how well they execute. And I'm not gonna, yeah. and again. I don't I don't want to go into this giving them an, an you know in the A range. Yeah. You know we really need okay. the, this this show needs to redeem mis past bad movies and TV shows. Yeah, I don't know that I would put that on any series. I just want it to be good in and of itself. 
right? It's not responsible for anything that came before. And of course, I mean, you know, if this is the peak of the pinnacle of the series, that would be disappointing. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, exp I'm, I'm I am judging this as a first episode, not just uh, as a premiere. Yeah, this is as a premiere. Think episode. of the next gen premiere. Talk to me in yeah. eight episodes. Let's talk again in eight episodes, and then we'll see yeah. where that grade. If that grade stayed a minus, that would be great. Okay. If it goes higher, even better. But yeah. it could go down to a B but yeah, minus. It, it would need C to plus. improve to keep that grade right. where it is. So let's. The, right now, I think that there's a forecast of four episodes, and then they're saying they're, they haven't put titles out for anything past that. But I think we should do have another talk in another four or five episodes. Or at the, definitely at the end of the season. Yeah. We'll, we'll do. We'll do a, a Yeah, definitely at least one more. But we do know one thing. Yes. About yeah, season two. Season well, two. No. Well, I don't know. Did they like green light a season Kirk. two? Kirk. Well, they they They're already talk in season two. They and they already. They all I was going to say they cast James Kirk. Right. They cast James Kirk. That's something. We don't know what that means. I'm excited. I'm They're excited. not saying anything else. We just Except know season two. We're going to see. Yeah. Jim Kirk. All right. So, what do you say, Steve? Uh, again, I I think that it was a worthy start of a much anticipated uh, series. I think they got the vibe right. I like this era. I like Anson Mount. I like mm -hmm. Ethan Peck. I like the whole cast. I think they're off to a great start. Again, evaluating it as a premiere episode. Uh, it did this. It could have been better, you know what I mean? It, it could have blown me away, it didn't. Yeah. It was just, okay, that was a solid start. They're heading in the right direction. It keeps me optimistic for the rest of the series, but they have to up their game, you know, in, in order for that to, you know, in order for me to continue to like it. So if you enjoyed this episode, you can go to Alpha Quadrant and the number six dot com. We also have a Patreon if you want to give us support. And we will be back with another episode next week. Thanks, guys.